Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to reset your administrative password on your Windows 10 device. So we're going to go through a couple of different ways on how to resolve this. So the two primary ways that you're going to resolve it is going to depend on if you're using a local account or a Microsoft based account. So if you do not have any email address linked to your computer, so you don't have to insert your Microsoft.com email every time you turn on your computer, this tutorial will cover you guys as well. And you guys actually have a more simple fix, but assuming the bulk of you guys are probably going to have a local account, and that's pretty much what I'm gearing most of this video towards, this tutorial will be for you guys as well. So we're going to jump right into it and we're going to start and this will pretty much be the same process for whatever account type you're using. And you want to go on to Microsoft's website and download the Windows 10 Media Creation Utility and you want to basically boot your computer off of the Windows 10 installation media. And I will have a link in the description to the utility and basically you just have to have a bootable DVD or USB flash drive and you want to boot your computer off of it. So if you guys are familiar with the BIOS settings, you're more than welcome to change the boot order to your DVD or USB flash drive to be your first boot option drive. And that will be your computer off of the disk or the USB flash drive respectively. And also if you knew how to get into your boot menu options, you're welcome to do this as well. Now depending on your computer's manufacturer, the key might be a little bit different, but generally it's either the escape or the F2 key when your computer is booting up. But again, it really depends on a case-by-case -case basis. So that's not really what this tutorial is about, but assuming that you have your Windows 10 installation media already ready to go, and we're ready to boot our computer off of our DVD, you are in the right place. So we're gonna start by going to our CD-ROM drive, which is DVD. It might be a little bit different depending on your computer. And I'm gonna select that. And then I'm gonna select any key to boot off of my DVD here. And this will take a moment, so you just want to be patient. And then once you're on the screen, you want to hold down the Shift and the F10 key on your keyboard at the same time. So Shift and the F10, only those two keys. F10 is a function key on the top of your keyboard. I'm not telling you to tap the F key and the 10 key. It's one key. So hold down the Shift and the F10 to open up the elevated command line window. And now you want to type in disk part, one word. And then once you're typing that in, and keep in mind disk is spelled with a K. So disk part, once you're done doing that, you want to hit enter. If you did it correctly, it should say Microsoft Disk Part Version, and then whatever, doesn't really matter too much. And then once you're done with that, you want to type in List Volume. Two words, List Volume, so L-I-S-T, space Volume. And then once you're done doing that, you want to hit Enter. So now you want to select your main partition on your system where you're going to be having your Windows partition on. So you can see the largest one here is going to be 24 gigabytes. And keep in mind, there might be some numbers here that look bigger. And you can see that there's a couple that are, are about 2,800 megabytes and one that's about 549 megabytes. Keep in mind, there's 1,024 megabytes in a gigabyte. So it's considerably smaller than that 24 gigabytes. And you can also see the other two drives are, have different labels. So one's a system reserve drive and the other one might be the ESD ISO. You don't want to mess with those if you have any reserved partitions. So we want to select our volume 2 here. So you want to type in CD space and you can see our letter is D. See this letter right here? It's D for volume 2. So we're going to select D. We're going to type the letter D and then a colon. And a colon is just two dots on top of each other. So one dot and second dot right underneath. Once you're done doing that, you want to hit enter on your keyboard. Now you want to type exit. Now you want to type in CLS. So CLS, that's not a 1, that is an L. So CLS, then hit enter. And you remember our previous letter was D, so we're going to select D again. So D colon, no spaces. Then you're going to hit enter. Now you're going to type in CD space Windows. Then you're going to hit enter. 
and now you're going to type in CD space system 32 then you're going to hit enter one more time and now you're going to type in copy space UTIL MAN dot EXE so again UTIL MAN dot EXE so man UTIL man dot EXE space UTIL MAN1 so the number one dot EXE so you want to make sure it's spelled exactly how it is on my screen right here so copy space UTIL UTIL man man dot exe space util man one this is number one not spelled out o n e it's the number one dot exe once you're done doing that you want to hit enter should say one file copied if you typed it incorrectly if you did not you're more than welcome to go type that command in again and now what you want to do now and now what you want to do is type in copy space cmd dot exe space cm d one dot exe so again exactly how it appears on my screen here and this time we have a space in between copy cmd dot exe and cmd one dot exe and then it should say one file copied so now you want to type in del space U T I L M A N dot E X E. So again, U T I L M A N dot E X E. You want to have that D E L in front and a space in between those two. And then once you're done doing that, you want to hit enter on your keyboard. And basically, this will delete the old U T I L M A N dot E X E. And now that you've done that, you want to type in rename. space cmd dot exe space util man dot exe so again rename space cmd dot exe another space util man dot exe exactly how it appears on my screen then you want to hit enter now at this point you want to close out of any windows you have open on your screen so close out of everything You want to cancel the Windows installation? Yes. Now, if you have a lock screen, you want to scroll up the screen, just like you normally would. And then when you're on a screen that appears like this, you want to go down to the ease of access icon down here, where it looks like a little clock. It should be the middle icon. You want to left click on it. And now this will open up a command line window. And now you want to type in control space user passwords two. And then once you're done doing that, you want to hit enter. Now you want to left click on the username listed here. And then underneath password, you want to left click on reset password. And there you go guys, simple as that. Enter in your new password, and then confirm the new password. Then click on OK, click on OK again, and then you can close out of this command line window. Type in your new password, and there we go guys, the computer should log us into Windows. So I should note, if you are not using a local account and you're using a Microsoft account, Instead of doing what we showed in this tutorial, a little bit of a modification, you want to type into the command line window when we're back in the troubleshooting view. You want to type in net user administrator active. So again, net user administrator active. And then this will create an administrator account that is visible to you. And I recommend signing into that account. And then you can go in and delete the other email account if you're unable to get in. So it's pretty easy to do that, and you would be able to probably change the password of the other account once you sign in with the administrative account. So that's for the Microsoft account method. But I do hope this brief video was able to help you guys out. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and I look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial.
Goodbye.